What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. I'm doing a short Lee Cup report on a standard Lee Cup I played in yesterday with Zorak Elisopod. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my deck list as well and how I'm feeling about this list for Charlotte, which is uh, the North Carolina Regionals standard format that is coming up this weekend. Um, so I'll get right into the tournament report. Round one. Uh, so this was a six rounds, best of one, top eight, League Cup. Um, top 16 does not get points. All the top eight does. Um, so round one, I played against Buzzwell Garbador. And my hand was Tapu Koko, Aranguru, DCE. Uh, I think a Parallel City, 2A Sarola, a Guzma, a Field Blower, an Enhanced Hammer, and I just drew pass for two turns and lost. Uh, so round one was super uneventful, and I lost against... Um, a Buzz Garb is probably 50-50 or so. Um, it would be better if I was playing Mewtwo instead of Mew. But it's definitely a winnable matchup, and um, I lost to just a really bad hand, and that happens in best of one. So nothing I could have done about it. Um, round two, I played against Duskmane Garbodor, a deck that I'm really hype on, but I'm trying to keep myself from playing because, uh, it looks really great on paper, uh, but it loses to, um, like, some fringe-ish stuff. It loses to Volk, it loses to, um, Zorark Break and Zorark's Trickster GX, so I need Zorark running Dark Energy. Um, it's bad against Pseudo Wudo. It's bad against Clefairy. Um, but, so I played against Duskmane Garbodor. I got a fairly good setup, and then I got Garbotoxin locked. Um, I had one Field Blower in about a 35 card deck, and my other Field Blower was prized. And I just never found energy or Field Blower or draw supporters after my setup. Um, I think I had one turn of trading. And I got a knockout. But other than that, I never found a field blower. I never found Cynthia or N. Um, and I lost because they used Meteor Tempest three times on GX Pokemon. Um, so I started out 0-2. Uh, round 1, I wasn't too upset about because it was nothing I could have played better to prevent. And round 2, I just didn't draw into a field blower. So I got hit with some unfortunate luck early on in the tournament um i knew one or two four twos would make it so i was playing it out and most of my reason for this league cup was practice for charlotte anyway of course i would love to win um but as long as i got some insight and reminded myself of some things to keep in mind for charlotte the tournament would be beneficial um so round three i played against garbador spread with like coco necrozma meow stick espion ex um, and he never really got rolling. Um, I think I just ride his beating like six or seven times and took all my prizes like off of Coco's and a Drampa GX and then a bunch of one prizers. Um, so yeah, he had, he was just trying to stay alive most of the game. Like he really didn't draw much of anything. Um, but I got to see enough of his deck to know it was Garbodor spread. Um, next round I played against uh, Peter Kika playing with Zorak and Doug Trio, and he benched, I believe he had four Zoraks, a Lele, and a Doug Trio. Uh, a Diglett were his six Pokemon at one point. Um, and since he only had one Diglett, I just Guzma the Diglett, and then he benched another one and I Guzma the Diglett. Um, and so he could never one-shot me, and I was just getting ahead. Um, if I ever let a Diglett live, it would have turned into a Doug Trio, and he would have one-shot a Zorark. Um, but we got to the point in the game where I only had two prizes left, so I didn't even have to worry about the Diglets anymore, because he had four prizes left, so I just won anyway. Um, I don't remember if I crossing cut a Lele, or if I just two-shot a Zorark, or if he possibly scooped. At the end of the game, he had, like three to five cards left in his deck i'm sure he had a shuffle draw left but um because i wouldn't allow him i was uh killing every diglet that hit the bench it was really hard for him to uh 
It was pretty possible, actually, for him to get a one-shot on me because he could not bench two Diglets at once. Um, I also got parallel really late, and after the game he told me he kept holding on to, like, field blowers to get rid of it. Um, so that might have been slightly detrimental to him. Um, I mean, it was also smart of him to hold on to the field blowers because I'm playing two parallels. I should have hit them earlier, but I didn't hit them until really close to the end of the game. Um, and that the parallel hurt him as well because I lay laid I guzman up a lele and then paralleled so he had to remove I believe two Pokemon and he had four Zoroarks and a Diglett I think so he had to remove two Zoroarks something like that I don't know the game went pretty well for me though um, if he was able to bench multiple Diglets at a time um, it could have been really close but I was fairly comfortable after I realized he was not going to be able to bench more than one Diglett. Um, next, I played against Mike Newey, another really good player from the area. He was playing Zorak Guardi. Um, unfortunately, going into the match, we had just we were talking about how important getting a Gallade out is. And um, turn two of the game, I knocked out his routes on the bench with Iguzma and Raya speeding and then I believe he bridgeted or ultra balled and realized all three of his routes his other three routes were prized and he scooped shortly after that um because I had a really great setup and it would have been a good game if he could get Gallades down but uh with three routes one in the discard he would have had to find two puzzles just to get one routes back then I would probably just kill the next turn. So he realized that he didn't have a chance in that game. Um, and then round six. So I'm at 3-2. Um, my resistance is absolutely terrible. I think every one of my opponents have dropped aside from Buzz Garb, which is about the ID into top cut. Um, but I'm playing it out and I play Zorak Elisopod versus Zorak Elisopod. Um, I believe it was a fairly new player and... Uh, he was friendly with the one of the people I played earlier so I think I had talked to him earlier in the tournament but never seen him around before um, he and after the game I looked at his deck we compared lists he was playing something maybe three cards four cards off of this um, but he did tell me he hadn't practiced the Zorka Lysopod matchup much and that I would probably win this or something along those lines um, and I told him just you know uh, try to get the Acerola trade the Acerolas whenever you can and try to get ahead in the prize trade um, But that's exactly what I ended up doing in the game um, I 6 owed him because I either had max potion or Acerola or enhanced hammer or parallel city or sometimes some kind com some combination of those cards to just stop him from being able to attack or take prizes off of my Zoroarks or my Golisopods and I think I sniped every Wimpod he put down. So he's his only attackers were Zoraks. And I played two or three Enhanced Hammers that game. Um, so I just really controlled the board with Enhanced Hammer, Parallel, Max Potion, Acerola. While also trying to take care of his Wimpods. Because they attack for Grass Energy. And I was trying to keep his Special Energy off the board. And his Grass Energy by attacking them. I kept them off the board. Um, so I won that game 6-0. Um, it went just about as good as a Zorical Isopod mirror can. We both had really great setups, but I took control with the healing and the disruption. Uh, so I finished it 4-2 and I placed somewhere within between 9th and 16th place. Um, I think there was like 8 4 and 2s and one of them made top 8. Um, so I came back and won 4 games in a row. Um, at the beginning of the day, I was I was thinking, well, you know, it's only best of one. Um, and dead hands happen with any deck. It's just, you know, variants. Anything could really happen. It's random. Um, but I was still pretty upset that the, quote, most consistent deck in the format, I lost game one because of, like, literally nothing I could do. And then game two I lost just because I couldn't draw into a field blower for like six to eight turns. Or a, or a draw support. Um, but I still really love the deck. 
it's still doing really well in testing for me especially best two out of three is so much more uh, skill oriented because um, with a consistent deck you have to assume that you're not going to brick two out of three games so you'll actually get to play your games out in best two out of three um, seeing Duskmane Garb and knowing that on paper it's a really great matchup for Duskmane Garb and my opponent even told me she was fairly new to the game um, and didn't like know everything she should do and it still beats Zorical Isopod um, it just goes to show that how good that matchup is for it but I'm trying to keep myself talked out of playing Duskwing Garb at Charlotte because of, as I mentioned earlier, I think it just kind of loses to some fringe stuff like Trickster GX and Zorik Breaks Foul Play and Clefairy's Metronome and Pseudo Widow's Watch and Learn. And it can put it into unfavorable prize trades in all of those situations. Um, so as for my deck list, I am still very happy with the list Aranguru I didn't get any use out of it I almost did in my last match but um if he ended up getting rid of a couple of my DCE I would have ended up using this to just deck him out since he had like five cards left but I end up taking all my prizes as my win condition um I do think I'm going to keep Aranguru in here just so I don't lose to mill decks the same way if I wasn't playing a Lysopod I would be playing a Giratina promo so I don't lose to uh, Greninja. Um, but I also like Oranguru because it has other uses. It's not just a mill deck counter. It can also get you back your puzzles or it can mill out mirror matches that you remove their, all of their special energies and maybe you can't get knockouts and they can't get knockouts, but you can just resource management until your opponent has no deck left. So... Aranguru is probably a cuttable card, but I'm going to try to keep it in there just so because I know there are situations where I'm going to want it because in testing, I'd say I have used it about one in eight games or one in 10 games in testing. And if all of your games go to a game three in a nine round tournament, that's 27 games. So if we're going to look at those odds, Aranguru will come in handy a few times in the tournament. At least I hope it does. Um, Tapu Koko. Um, this could be cut for maybe another Float Stone or maybe a Mewtwo if I really wanted to put more Buzzwall Hate in the deck. Especially for Buzzwall Garbador. Maybe another Fuel Blower because uh, Garb is getting some more popularity with these non-traditional garb decks like buzz garb and dusk main garb and garbador spread but i do like tapu coco because you can bridge it for it and then retreat your active Wimpod wimp out for free and have a permanent free retreater in the game and that's really good when you're playing with glycopod gx so you can always get your max damage with first impression um the one evo soda evo soda is a consistency card it's not um, it's not super pertinent to the deck, so it's taking out an Evo Soda wouldn't be like taking out a Zorak GX. Evo Soda is just another way to get your Zorak GX down, so it is in theory cuttable because it's just there to. It's kind of like a fifth Ultra Ball, um, but I do like it. You know, consistency is always really good, and sometimes games are going to come down to who can get set up just like um i mentioned my first game did in the league cup yesterday um i might take out i might take out the fourth n or something else for a sycamore but i usually don't want to use sycamore it's just that another draw supporter might have helped me out um, with, the, with those dead hands and not being able to find a field blower. So maybe a Coco out for a field blower. Or a Coco out for Sycamore or Oranguru maybe. Um, Mew EX. Uh, I would not take that out. Buzzwool GX is strong as ever. Um, I am loving the Max Potion. And I'm loving the Mallow. Um, those two are really really great in the mirror match. Pretty much against any other Zorark deck. It's really great. Um, I never felt like I needed a second float stone. The Tapu Koko is fine for your free retreater. Two Parallel City is amazing. It's just 
so good to get your Parallel City out first in the Zora Kamir match. Um, and I think people are still underestimating Parallel City, but it's a really great card that should be valued for what it is. Um, and yeah, so I'm very happy with this deck list still. If I play Zorak Elisapod at Charlotte, I imagine it's going to be the same list. Um, and Zorak Elisapod is still my top option for Charlotte. Um, on Wednesday, I will be uploading or I'll be putting live my discussion video for the meta for Charlotte um, with three other players that will be joining me for that discussion video. So definitely look forward to that. Um, I will be streaming a little more this weekend leading up to Friday since I'm on spring break and Charlotte is Saturday. So make sure you're following me on Twitch if you enjoy watching PTCGO on Twitch. And I've also just become an affiliate. So if you're looking for a PTCGO, uh, a PTCGO streamer to subscribe to on Twitch, maybe with your Twitch Prime or whatever, um, I'm uploading my emote sometime today or tomorrow, hopefully. So uh, I'm really excited about becoming a Twitch affiliate, and that's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying the streaming. But thank you guys for watching Celio's Network. I hope this helped you out. And please leave me any questions about Zorica Lysopod in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.